If you look up the definition for darkness, it talks about maybe their partial or total absence of light. My guest today is Keith Diafera, and Keith, he had a lot of darkness in his life, a lot of challenges, a lot of what he calls evilness, but something, something was able to change him. It was the gospel of Jesus Christ. It brought light into his life. And today you're going to hear his story about how he changed and continues to change because of Christ. Hey everyone, this is Donald Kelly, host of Changing, and I'm so excited to be here with you. I'm so excited for this podcast, as you heard in my first episode. And today we have an amazing guest. His name is Keith, and Keith is an individual that I got a chance to meet over the past several years. Just awesome gentleman. And his story about how he changed his life, I, I mean, to be honest, I've heard about it and I've heard it, but this was my first time sitting down with Keith and getting full detail about it. When you meet Keith, he has tattoos all over his face, and sometimes it could be intimidating. And on this episode, he actually talks about that, how it was purposeful. He wanted to make people intimidated by him. And you're going to hear why he was so bent on having this intimidation and why this was so important for him in a role that he had in his life. If Keith could change, why can't we? Why can't you? Jesus Christ could do that. You're going to hear what happened and how this could help you and somebody in your life. Check it out. Keith, it's a pleasure to sit down with you and to talk to you. Thank you so much, man, for coming on this podcast. You're welcome. So, uh, Keith, I, I was talking to, you know, as we, we, we know this podcast is all about change. Um, we're all changing. And being our very first guest, we're excited to hear your story because your story is really compelling, um, really powerful. Um, no matter who you are, no matter where you come from, we all have a past, and that past can define us, and that past can help us to become better in the future. So I, why don't you tell us, take us a little back and tell us a little bit more about you, um, where you come from, and, and so forth, and all that good stuff. Okay, well, um, I, I come from Chicago, Illinois. Um, um, as a child, I was, uh, I have a very good family. I have a father and mother and a brother and a twin. I also have a twin sister who, who's seven minutes older than me. Oh, um, cool. yeah, Karen, her name is, uh, she doesn't have one tattoo, <laughs> 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 but anyways, um, so as a, as a child, when I grew up, um, and, and I've posted this before on Facebook, um, no one really knew me. I had, a kind of like a secret life. I, I let people see what they wanted to see. Mm -hmm. um, and then there was, was a very dark side to me um, that compelled me to uh, darkness and to evil. I was motivated by uh, darkness. I, it was very appealing to me. And, and uh, like I said, even the closest people to me mm -hmm. did not know me. And, and I, and I, I finally got that off my chest and put it out there a year and about a year and a half ago. Um, and because no one really knew what I did and uh, how dark I was, I was an extremely ungodly man. Um, I uh, was attracted to uh, drugs, alcohol, um, the nightlife and mm -hmm. uh, things that were definitely not of God. Um, but in the, in the interim, I would, I would pose, you know, and, and portray myself as this kind of, you know, just a goofy teenage kid and, uh, you know, a guy growing up in Chicago and, uh, being a kid. And, and the reality of it was, I was molding myself into a, um, uh, person who was very unsavory and, uh, at an early age, without anyone knowing, I uh, I can't say the name, mm -hmm. but I uh, um, became affiliated with a uh, street gang, a very well-known street gang in the city of Chicago, um, who predominantly, uh, who basically runs the streets. And uh, involved with that was uh, many different ungodly things. And uh, like I said, no one even knew uh, my family and my close friends didn't know my affiliation. I kept it, uh, there were, I had two sets of people in my life. I had the, the dark people and then I had my family. 
So yeah. Keith, right there for a second, um, let's talk about that. Like what, um, I mean, you sound like you had a good family life though, like with your mom and your, your siblings. And it so- It could have been good. It could have been good. Been. Yeah. What, what was not so good then? That- it was it was my choice. I I chose I chose to uh, um, ignore in uh, the guidance of my parents. I chose to ignore the my siblings and uh, it, I'm I'm like kind of like you ever hear the the black sheep of the family expression? Yeah. That's that was me, and um, I. I considered myself, um, I mean, they looked at me like I was just a kid who was a little bit mixed up. <laughs> and the reality of it was I was molding myself um, or my environment that I hung around was molding me into a uh, monster. Um, and when I say a monster, I mean a person who had absolutely no uh, conscience. I had no conscience, zero Um how old were you Keith, when you first started uh, going in towards the gang life? About 14. So, I mean, how did that start? You mind telling us that was that like you, you, you said you had this attraction to it? Well, the, the drugs and the alcohol were introduced into my life in an early age. Um, and that, of course, that warped my um, thinking. And uh, I liked that life. Um, I was at that point in time, of course, not now, but. Um, I was very much attracted to, uh, uh, these things. Like I said, I had this desire for some odd reason Mm -hmm. to, uh, be evil. And, um, I kind of fit the part and I, I, uh, you know, in, 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 here's a, here's a, uh, the weird thing. I actually felt the presence of Christ in my life. I did. And I, uh, didn't know what to do with it. I actually, I don't know if he was reaching out to me in my heart and my soul and trying to let me know he, the spirit of God was there. Mm-hmm. I felt this, this, I felt the presence of Christ, yet I didn't know what to do with it. And if I mentioned it to the people around me, they always said the same thing. Why do you want to ruin the moment? Why do you want to mention Christ's name? You're ruining the moment. You know, and I said, I have, a, you know, like we'd be doing something that was not very savory. And I'd say, you know, I don't feel right about this. And they're like, listen, please stop with that because you're ruining the moment. I would actually feel the presence of Christ inside me. And, uh, but I didn't know what to do with it. I, I, I was not familiar with uh, godly things. And um, you were, uh, uh, this was like in your teenage years or as yeah, you- my. Or yeah. later on in you know your adulthood, or that was pretty, th- those 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 years that molded me were between the age of fourteen and twenty, is when I actually conformed into this secretive person. Um, and like I said, I'll say this, and I'll say this a million times: no one even knew me. My family, until recently, knows me. They did not know this person. I I was so phony. I I lived a lie. I was a complete lie. From how how did you do that though? Like because I mean you're you're I, gambling in, in the evenings or night times or well I did. I used to I used to actually literally I had like it was like a job. I would disappear at around six or seven o'clock at night and yeah. roll back at three four in the morning sometimes five in the morning and then just act normal again. And a lot of times I'd come back beat up or, you know, black eyes, broken nose. And they like, what happened? And I was like, you know, no, I ran into the problem. And uh, cause that, that type of life is very um, um, crazy. And, um, and, and, and I, and I also was a street fighter. Um, I don't know. These days they call it uh, MMA. Um, yeah. But um, I was a ultimate fighter. I was a street fighter, almost like there was a gentleman named Kimbo Slice. Yeah. Um, I, I actually fought him. I, I got beat by him in a minute and 38 seconds, 22 years ago. I fought him. <laughs> I fought him 22 two years ago and in, in Deerfield Beach. I fought him in, at two o'clock in the morning and uh, I got beat um, a minute and 38 seconds. I was um, 48 and six as a fighter. 
Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. But, um, my, my childhood, um, I chose the path and my, like I said, my sister and my brother were, um, very conscious of my parents' um, wants and needs. And, um, they both were turned out to be very good people. My, um, my 20, my, when the age of 20 and beyond, um, I just kept getting worse and worse and worse. What do you mean? What do you mean getting worse? What are some things? What, what did you do? Well, I actually became, um, I, I, like, once again, I will not say names, but I, I actually became a collector for the game. Yeah. Um, and I would collect money, um, which was, um, from drugs and, uh, um, I was very good at it. Um, as a matter of fact, not too long ago, recently, um, I was um, propositioned by um, Miami chapter to uh, reestablish my, my um, um, ties with uh, the gang, and I refused and almost got killed for it. Wow. So um, we'll come back to that and hear about how you got out of the gang, but everybody was always curious about the tattoos. How, uh, when did you get your tattoos and tell us about that? What led to that and why? Well, you, you, you can't see right now, but I mean, I mean, if, we, if I go like this, I mean, I'm completely covered. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, and, uh, um, I'm completely covered. And, um, I was, to me, it was part of the, the look that I wanted to portray. Um, I wanted to be intimidating. Mm -hmm. And um, um, so between my attitude and, and the darkness inside me and, and the, my appearance, uh, the combination um, drew respect, in, but a respect that wasn't earned from kindness, that's, that's for sure. Um, it was earned from um, fear. And that's not a good respect. And uh, I was a very feared man in the city of Chicago. Um, I was very uh, well known for being um, aggressive. And uh, literally, and this is not a lie, when I used to walk down the streets on the west side, you could hear doors locking. As I walked past the houses, you see people run off the porch and go inside because they didn't know if I was there to hurt them or, or whatever. I had a very bad reputation. As an enforcer. The... I was an enforcer. That's what yeah. that's that exact matter of fact, it's funny you said that. That's my title. Yeah. That's what I was. Yeah. How old were you when you started getting the tattoos? Was it all at once? Um I started getting my tattoos at around I think the first one was eighteen. Eighteen. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, uh, you just kind of going. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, I mean, uh, the, the face tattoo, I mean, th did that hurt? <laughs> yeah. I mean, and, and, as you, and so everyone could see it goes up and all over and, um, yeah. Um, it, it was one of the most painful pains I've ever felt in my life. It felt almost like a uh, jackhammer inside my head. Um, yeah, especially under the eyes. Yeah, uh, wow. that wow. that part um was very painful because the cheekbone is right below it. Oh yeah, and uh, but the amount of money that I have on me is uh, almost twenty thousand dollars. Wow, of of ink. So it's amazing, amazing. Yeah. Um, so you you got what you wanted though. You wanted to be intimidating, and you wanted in, to instill fear in people. Um, yeah, if you want, if you want me to to step away from the camera and put a tank top on. Do you want me to do that real quick? Or? You're good. You're good. All... Okay. I didn't know if you wanted to see the rest of the tattoos, but I'm, I'm covered. No, but, no. You, I, I, it's like, uh, I know that there was, uh, there was a change, like something started to happen and yeah. hearing about that life. I'm curious to know, and everyone's listening and watching. They're curious to know, like what happened though? Like, when did you decide, when did the change started to happen in you? When did well, you change? if there's one thing that I am now is honest, hmm. and this might be sound a little bit off, but 
I actually started to feel bad when I was about 40. Um, and, and, then, and then in a couple of days, I'll be celebrating my 62nd birthday. Um, thank you. On um, February 26th is my birthday um, and my twins. So, but um, uh, I'm sorry, rephrase the question again. I'm sorry. I, I, I just got in my... When did you start to change? Like what happened? Um, the at, the, at the age of 40, I, and this is the reality of it. I was tired of waking up and, and we used to call it growing eyes in the back of your head. Cause yeah. you don't know when, when an enemy is going to come. I, I've been um, shot seven times. I've been stabbed four times. Um, I've been beat up probably more times than people comb their hair. Um, I, um, recently, um, and this has nothing to do with the games. I died in March of last year, uh, three deaths in a row, um, from, uh, anaphylactic reaction to, um, a medication. But, um, I, I started changing, um, when I was 40, I, I, I hated the way I felt when I looked in the mirror. Um, um, for some odd reason, I think God touched me. I'm not for some odd reason. God touched my heart and uh, let me know that I was not doing the right thing. I actually started feeling really bad about my life. And um, so at the age of 40, um, and I said this in a video, um, I didn't know how I was going to do it, but I said, I have to get away and I have to. Um, change and i left behind a massive amount of money and a massive amount of nice things to walk away they they treated me very well um for collecting money i got very paid paid very well um but um i walked away from that because i believe in my heart and and you know me now the man that I am now is a is a great example of the love of God and the reach of God the, and in the and non-ending reach. He reached down real far to pull me out, and uh, he pulled me right out of the flames. I mean, I was I was gone. Um, I was inevitably going to probably die in the darkness of my life, and uh, at the age of forty something went off in my head and said um you can't do this anymore i walked away from most people wouldn't have walked away from what i walked away from well, well yeah. give us an idea you said you had a lot of money and opportunities there was there like homes or cars everything yeah. i had a um that that wasn't even in my name but it was mine it was uh i had a condominium um on the lake Lake Michigan downtown. I had a um, brand new car. Um, I had availability of, to a boat whenever I wanted to on Lake Michigan. Um, I had um, endless um, availability of money because it didn't matter. Since I was I was collecting hundreds of thousands of dollars for the gang, and uh, so if I wanted something, they would just give it to me. Yeah, and. and that, I would pay him back with my, uh, my, um, loyalty. Yeah. And like you said, you wanted to know how you get in and how you get out. If you want me to explain that, I don't mm -hmm. know if you want me to, yeah. but okay. To get in, you get beat for three minutes from your chin to your waist. Um, you can't fight back. You can't block anything. And a lot of people say three minutes, um, is not a long time, um, to get hit without blocking it and to get hit continuously by each member of the chapter. In other words, um, in my case, there was over 80 guys that would, be, that would beat me. So they were going a circle. They were standing in a circle and one punch each and, and the next punch, next punch. They did that for three minutes. I've probably seen the same guy four times. So you can figure that out. It's 320 hits around. So, um, that's to get in and then to get out the same thing. They call it a beat in and a beat out. So to get out at the age of 40, I was told if I go to Florida, 
and don't V out. We call it a V out, violation out. If I didn't V out, I'd be dead. They would have came to my house and they said one bullet, that's it. Right to right between your eyes and that's it. That's the way you get out. Uh, if you don't do it the right way. Hmm. So I decided to leave the gang and I was told you're going to have to V out. And uh, so I took a beating, a uh, three minute beating. But at this time I ended up almost dead. Um, so I ended up in the hospital for four weeks. Wow. Uh, I had um, three broken ribs, a uh, lacerated, uh, punctured lung, lacerated kidney, um, lacerated liver, internal bleeding. Um, I had a, a broken hip from it. He hit me too low. Um, they uh, cracked my sternum in half. Um, Sorry. It was the most embarrassing and painful experience of my life, but it was necessary. Yeah. yeah. Because without that, you wouldn't be talking to me right now. And uh, I had to pay the price, and I did. And recently, uh, they tried to recruit me recently. Um, members of the church know about it because I immediately contacted them. As a matter of fact, I contacted them during the time it was happening. And uh, they threatened my life yeah. and told me that when they leave the house, they walked in my house without, I didn't even know how they found me. Yeah. yeah. That if, if I say no, I'm going to leave in a bag. And I told them, and this is the truth. I told them, I won't do that to God. And I would rather die at the hands of a gun than to serve Satan again. I'm not going to ever serve Satan. And I said, I didn't go through seven years of change to turn my back on God. And I did, and I passed the ultimate test because I was told I was going to die. Yeah. But, yeah. Right. And this this happened twice now. Um, but finally, it was it was completely um, via via um, a phone call was completely squashed, and they will never mess with me again because they know if there's one thing they respect, yeah, yeah. The dedication. Um, it, it, they respect loyalty. Believe it or not, um, a street gang has morals. Certain they believe in loyalty, and um, and I had proven to them that I was loyal to God, and Keith, they couldn't I, argue that. Keith, I want to know, like, what? So you, I heard you. This, you know, you you did this 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 feeling of change came about you and but what was it that made you how did you find christ how did you find well, god and to change it was a 13 year process when i came here in 2000 um i i'm very talented in the construction industry mm -hmm. um um i decided to um um get into that business and and then um i um in 2013 the house that i bought in 2004 i lost and you'll see why i'm telling you this um when i lost my home i was homeless for two months i had a um, quarter of a million dollar home um and then i put about a hundred thousand dollars into it and it ended up uh um, worth about four hundred fifty thousand, and I lost it to a loan mod um, scam, um, and um, that's how I met the missionaries from the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter Day Saints, and um, they told me things that I never even knew existed. Um, um, I I didn't know I had hope. 
uh, I didn't know how much love God had for me. And uh, I started listening to them in 2000, September of 2013. Um, I, um, they came walking past, um, I, I moved into a trailer park when I lost my home. And um, the first home I moved into, um, they were practicing, I don't know if you ever heard of it, Santa Rhea. It's witchcraft. And um, I immediately got out of that house and I moved in the house across the street and the sisters walked by. And um, they said to me later um, that they were very afraid when they seen me. Yeah. And that was very intimidating and um, they were scared. So they just didn't want to go to me. They walked past, but they said they walked to the corner of the block in the Holy Spirit told them to turn around and go back and they did. And um, that was the beginning of this change, the, the beginning of the man that you see that you're talking to right now um, began in 2013 and um, um, and still changing still. Um, you gotta remember, um, I spent um, 40 years of my life molded into a monster so um it's kind of sewn into my bones and my body and uh my mind and uh to this day i i just i'm amazed at the strength of god and the love that he has for his children and i'm amazed at how much love he could give because he changed me yeah. with that love yeah. and uh and that's the man i am now i'm completely completely different person people that used to know me um as a matter of fact it's funny that um we're t talking about this i just got off the phone with a friend from chicago and she said i told her that you called me and said we're gonna do the podcast and she says please record it i want to see it because she said, I'm so proud of you, um, of the person you became, because she knew me right in the middle of when I was bad. And she said, I can't believe these videos I'm seeing of you. She said, it's amazing. And uh, she said, I'm proud. Yeah. yeah. And uh, to hear that from somebody who knew me <laughs> is quite... Um, awakening it, it, it's a i just i'm a man like i said i can't almost feel um like this is a dream um like almost too good to be true because some of the people that i knew um and i say new because i don't associate with those people anymore um through the grapevine i heard him say that it's impossible that he could have become the man that he is and that's a, that's a compliment to me because obviously it's amazing to them um, the change that I made. And let me tell you something. When I look back at the person I was, it is amazing. Yeah. yeah. The changes are unbelievable. And, um, and, and you know what the nicest thing it, it, that it is, is it was from God. It didn't, I didn't have to pay anybody. I didn't have to, to do anything bad to get it. All I had to do was give my faith and my love to God, walk in the footsteps of his son, Jesus Christ, and utilize the atonement of Jesus Christ in my life and go to my sacrament meetings, be a good person, do what I'm supposed to do, follow the commandments. And my life has become, I'm not gonna say I'm walking on air. Life, <laughs> life, life is still life. Yeah. But what a, what a difference. And, 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 you know, like you, you're a great example of a man who walks in the light of Christ. And, and I, I look up to people like you and I look up to people um, in the bishopric and, and the people in the church that I never seen people like this before. I'm, I wasn't used to um, this. I didn't even know what the word love meant. I really, I don't know what it sounds I know it sounds 
ridiculous, but love to me was was a tool people used to steal from me and to to um fool trick me. So I didn't trust the word love or I didn't trust the action. Um I know one thing for sure. I looked back and I and I never cried. Hmm. I, I didn't know how to cry. And that says something about my soul. Now I <laughs> I cry at the stupidest things. <laughs> but I mean but um but you know my heart has been my heart has been softened and humbled and and that tells me something it tells me that um i'm teachable and yeah. and and um i wasn't teachable before i was evil and 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 the last thing i wanted to hear about was god and um that's why it's amazing to me you're changing and you've changed um, and all because of the pure love of Christ, um, the love of God has, has helped you to do so and you finding him. Um, Keith, I know there's so much more to your story that we can, uh, you know, that we can hear about, um, that we probably could touch base, take, and, but we just don't have time for, for it because it's just such an, a remarkable story to be able to hear everything. And I'm sure friends out there listening to this, they would love to connect with you and to uh, meet you. But if somebody's listening to this, Keith, and they're in a predicament where they're thinking, they are changing, but they feel like they're not changing quick enough. Or they're listening to this and they feel like, well, I can't change my life. Um, my my life is f- is far gone beyond the the reasonable uh, measure of change. Like, what kind of what would you tell them in just like one sentence? What would you tell those individuals who are listening to that? And and and, and, and once again, it's funny you mention that because I just had this conversation with a guy. Um, yeah. See, if there's one thing that I'm a great example of, I could actually say I'm the one who wrote the book on evil. And so for a man of my um, background to have changed, it, it, it sets a precedent for the people who, what you just said, think they're not worthy of um, um, God. They think they're not. They've done too many wrong things that um, they, they can't change. And, and you know, I've had a guy the other day tell me, you know what, Keith, I, I love who, the person you become, but I don't think I could do what you did because I did a lot of bad things. And I told him, you didn't do one third of what I've done. You didn't. It, so please use me as an example um, that to anyone out there who thinks they're not worthy, I'm going to give you the, the black and white of it. The black and white of it is this. God loves all of his children. He loves all of his children. He knows we have free agency and we the ability to choose. And unfortunately, in this world, the way of the world is you're easily swayed um, and you can make a bad decision almost without even realizing it. And um, everyone is worthy of God's love. Everyone is worthy of change. Everyone is worthy of the blessings that God has for us. The way you accomplish, and I I can only tell you how I have done it. It's discipline. It's discipline and it's love. And it's faith in my heavenly father that the the actions that I I, um, make now, I always think of God. I think of how it's going to affect my relationship with God and, 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 and is it the right thing to do? And the gift that I got from being blessed with uh, his love is the gift of discernment. Um, and, and also in the ability for, I actually could see something coming at me sideways. That's not good for me. Um, the, I want to send, send a message to anyone out there who, who feels not worthy of God. Um, that's not true. Not one ounce of that is it, true. God it loves everyone. Every one of his children, he loves. He is waiting with his hand out for you to grab his hand. That's what he's doing. He does that with everyone. Um, it's when you make the decision to change your life, he's right there for you. So it's all up to the person 
um, that um, it, it is in question. And, and like you, you said, what about the people who think they're not worthy? Um, that was me. That was absolutely me. I said, how could God ever love a man like me? Look what I've done. I was working for the other team, you know, and I was, I, I, I did everything against God. I didn't like God. I did everything against him. I did whatever I could not to be godly. And now look at me. There's nothing I do that's not um, to, in the glory of God. I do it for, I do it in his name. I do everything in the name of God. And I do everything in the name of his son, Jesus Christ. And I walk in his footsteps so I could be a better man. And you want to know something? For the first time in my life, I love myself. I actually love the person who I am. Keith, um, I appreciate you sharing that story with us. I appreciate you sharing that message and your testimony. If folks out there listening want to get connected to you, want to get a chance to meet you, what's the best way for them to connect with you? I mean, they can go, if they, I don't know if they could go through you, but um, is it okay to give my email or? or um, yeah. And, and um, if anyone wants to contact me, um, you could contact me and I'll spell it for you. It's my first and last name at bellsouth.net. It's K E I T like Tom, H like Henry, D like Donald, I A, F like Frank, E R I A, it's Keith Theofera at bellsouth.net. Awesome. And send me send me an email and um I'll sure to get back to you as soon as possible. And uh, and if you need to, you can call me at 561-633-2080 at a reasonable time. I go to bed very early. Um, and uh, and you, you want to talk. And if you want um, some wisdom, I have a lot of it. Um, you know, I'll say something real quick. Um, they always say, if you want to learn how to... Um, you know, like when guys want to learn how to go to war and when they're, you, you talk to somebody who's been in it. Yeah. If you want to learn how to become good and not be bad anymore, you're looking at probably one of the most greatest examples. Like, and I don't say that with pride. I say that with the glory to God. I'm a great example of God's love and guidance. I'm a great example of his ability to forgive. Uh, and, you know, and, and, and without the atonement of Jesus Christ, I wouldn't be even speaking right now. And um, mm -hmm. um, anyone out there that wants to contact me, feel free to uh, contact me. And if you um, can get me that way, you can go through the Ch Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, LDS. Uh, speak to anyone. They can get my name and number off the tools uh, app. So um, if you want me, you can find me. All right, Keith, All right. We'll, we'll put that in our show notes today. We appreciate you taking the time to come on the show today, man. Thank you so much. You're welcome. That was Keith Diafera. If you want to go ahead and connect with Keith, you can find his information down below. I highly recommend it. He's just one of those individuals that is like the biggest teddy bear down to earth. And even though he had that past, where he's at today is totally different. And the only thing that made sense, the only thing that made that possible was the atonement of Jesus Christ. The fact that he died for our sins and rose again. The fact that he was able to wipe any one of our slates clean and wipe Keith's slate clean proved to us, uh, proved to us, proved to me that Christ lives. You're gonna hear more stories. You're gonna hear how other individuals came onto Christ and continue to come onto Christ, all because of their, their just transformation, that spiritual transformation that they had. And you might have that spiritual transformation. Transformation. Maybe you're in that spiritual transformation. Maybe you found out about this podcast or you're scrolling, you clicked on it because you're trying to change something in your life and you don't know how. Let us give you the invitation to have Christ help you to do that. Jesus Christ can mend our hearts. He can heal us. And he can heal you just as much as he's healed Keith. He's healed me. And he has healed many of our guests and brought us closer to Him and our Father in Heaven. Amazing stuff's ahead. Can't wait for to, to, to share them with you, and I can't wait for hearing of your spiritual journey and your testimonies. Go ahead and reach out to me. You can contact me from the information down below. We appreciate you listening today. Have a great day. Mm -hmm.